So in today's web dev tip, we're going to make a change to the redirect information that we're inserting into the database. Uh, so yesterday we set our uh, app up so that when someone uses one of the short URLs, we write an entry uh, to log uh, the time that the URL was accessed and also the user's IP address. But we, what we're going to do, instead of storing an IP address, we're just going to store a rough approximation of the user's location uh, using some geolocation uh, software. So there are different uh, providers that will do the geolocation lookup of an IP address for you. Uh, and this one, IP API, I've used before. I think we've used it in some tutorials on the Junior Developer Central channel before. Uh, but it's really easy to use. You don't need an API key. Uh, you get plenty of uh, requests, uh, so we shouldn't get rate limited. Uh, and it, it's not hugely accurate uh, in the data it gives back, but it's fine for our purposes. We're just going to give a rough approximation of, of what country and, and a rough area of where the URL has been accessed from. So if you head on over to ip-api.com, you can have a look at how uh, the service works. But essentially, all we do is send a GET request and we get some uh, information back about where the user is located. So the details it's giving back about my location aren't massively accurate, but uh, it has given me the right country and uh, a rough approximation of, uh, of where I'm located at the moment. Uh, so as I said, this will be fine for our, our purposes for our project. So the way we use the service, we basically send a GET request uh, to this endpoint. Uh, it has to be an unsecure connection because you have to pay if you want the HTTPS connection, but again, that's fine for us. And basically we go to ip-api.com forward slash JSON, and then everything after that is just the IP address. So this is one of Google's uh, name server addresses. Uh, and as you can see, it's given us some good information about it. We know it belongs to Google uh, and also uh, roughly where it's located as well. So let's go over to our code and we're going to send that get request using a package called Axios. Uh, we could send it using the node built-in HTTP tools, but they can be a bit cumbersome to use. Uh, and uh, Axios will just give us a nice promise-based interface where we can just send a request and use our async and await syntax uh, to easily store the data. So let's have a look at how that's going to look uh, in our project. Uh, so as mentioned, first thing, we'll just install Axios. So we'll say npm install Axios. Oh, it should only take a few seconds to go through and install. Uh, and with that uh, available to us, we'll just import it into the redirect URL roots file, because this is where we're doing the insertion into the database. Uh, and we'll just import Axios from Axios. Oops, I spelt it wrong there. It doesn't matter, but uh, just so we've got the same name here. Uh, and then we can use Axios to actually send that GET request at the point of when we know what the IP address is. So here, instead of inserting the IP address directly into the database, uh, let's get a reference to it up here. And we'll just put that here. So we'll say IP is equal to uh, the IP address uh, that we were previously storing. And before we insert anything into the database, or, or rather update that existing records uh, array in the uh, uh, entry that we've just retrieved, what we'll do is we'll say, IP uh, lookup request is a new variable. And we're just going to say await axios.get. And we just need to send a request to that URL that I mentioned before. So uh, if we just go back and copy uh, this one from here. So that's the IP address that we need to send to. Uh, but obviously we want to replace the uh, hard-coded IP address there with the IP that we've just uh, retrieved uh, from the user's request. So what will happen now is in this IP lookup request, a variable will have the result of uh, the uh, data uh, that's come back from uh, this lookup. And uh, it is actually stored on a property called data. Uh, so we'll just destructure that from an IP lookup request. And now this data variable uh, essentially will be an object that contains all of this kind of information here. Well, what information should we actually insert in there? Well, I think if we go for the city, the region name, and the country, and put that in as one string in, the loca in a location property in the redirect, uh, that should give us plenty of information to display to the user. Uh, of course, I guess if we did store some of the geographical location as well, like latitude and longitude, we could even do like a map or something like that uh, to display information about where the uh, URLs have been accessed from, but I think uh, we'll just go and keep it simple uh, for this tutorial uh, and uh, just put in the uh, string of the location of where the user is. So we'll say, uh, create a new variable here, and we'll say user location is equal to, and create a new template literal here, and we'll say data, and uh, we'll first of all put in the city, and then we'll put in a comma, and then we'll say data.region name and then another comma, and then we'll put in data.country. 
Okay, so that'll give us a string with the user location from the uh, IP uh, geolocation lookup. So instead now of putting in the IP address that we were before, uh, we'll remove that and just stick in a property into that redirect called location. We'll set that to the user location string that we just created. So if we save that now and commit it into our repository, uh, we'll need to actually push it up to our uh, remote server to actually see that working because any IP addresses that we generate on our local machine uh, will be the local host address and the geolocation service won't be able to parse those, it'll just give us an error. Uh, so we'll need to add in some error handling uh, for that, which we'll cover in the next tutorial. So I'll just commit this code and push it up to our repository so it will get it live and working on our DigitalOcean server so it will have our stats uh, information available uh, for our existing redirects. Uh, but in the next tutorial, we're just going to quickly do a bit of error handling for this redirect URL route uh, simply because, uh, as mentioned before, the uh, local host addresses, uh, if we're using that locally, uh, will fail on this Axios request. Uh, so we need to uh, put in some safeguarding so that we don't call this uh, IP API geolocation location API uh, unnecessarily. But that's it for this tutorial. Make sure you stay tuned for more web dev tips.